Okie dokie then. Let's see what happens. I'm not sure how to see. So this is how everybody starts. I'm just going to start. I'm going to sit here and drink and say hi. I don't know how to see. Oh, there's comments over there. Okay. Look at that. Set, slow, discussion, restricted. It's okay. I'm all right. I think it's okay. Mm -hmm. ah. All right. I'm just going to sit and um, I could weave in an end. No, I could not. There's a thing that I could do. So I'm here. Um, I thought I'd give Facebook Live a shot, see how it works. And um, if it's okay, I will continue to do it. My friend Edie tried one, uh, I think it was last week, and she said afterward that it was, she felt like she was talking into a void. And I said, oh my gosh, I could totally talk into a void. <laughs> so here I am talking into a void. Um, yeah, so what I thought I'd do is um, show you, tell you about the knit alongs that are happening at Woven Art. I work on uh, uh, three days a week at Woven Art, which is a yarn shop in East Lansing, Michigan. And um, it's an awesome yarn shop in East Lansing, Michigan. It's just across um, from Michigan State campus. And uh, we are currently open on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 11 to 6. And nope. That's not right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 12 to 6. Nope. Yes. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from um, 12 to 6. Thursday and Friday from 11 to 3. And Sunday from 11 to 5. We're closed on Saturdays while the football games are maybe on because um, the students are crazy and we're right, we're surrounded, the shop is surrounded by student housing. So we just um, prefer not to be open when they're Crowsing. If you've ever been in the in East Lansing, downtown East Lansing on a game game day, you'll know why that is. So I um, am hosting because we can't have people hanging out at the shop right now. Uh, and in groups, we only allow two in at a time um, and they aren't really supposed to hang out. They're shopping, hopefully. Um, so I've been hosting on Wednesdays from noon to one. We call it the lunchtime um, knit along or stitch along, crochet along, weave along, eat your lunch along, whatever you want to do. Um, we've been doing that for, um, I don't know, a few months. We started, I think in July. And, um, so I, as long as we have your email address, which is just used for this, um, Zoom event, not this Zoom event, but that Zoom event, um, we will, I'll send out an email right before the, knit along. So just before noon, sometimes right at noon, sometimes a little bit after noon on Wednesday. And um, it'll have the link to the Zoom um, meeting, the Zoom knit along, stitch along, whatever along. And so then people just pop in whatever week they can. Some are there all the time. Some are not there very often. Um, some are there on their actual lunch hour because they're working from home. Um, some are just at home and pop in for an hour and it's just an hour. We all have to get back to work at one. Um, I become a shop girl at Woven Art at one. I, I start stocking the shelves and um, selling the yarn. And um, anyway, so we had this idea to just, we can't have the community knit-ins anymore that we used to have. So now we're having this Zoom knit-in, knit along, whatever. Um, yeah, like you didn't even have to knit. Like I said, you can just eat your lunch. We don't care. We just want to see your face. So um, that's what we're doing and um the first month was i believe july and we had gotten in some really cool yarn um called from rowan called alpaca whoops um soft ha alpaca soft dk there you go and um paired with kids so haze Let's do it. There we go. Kids still K's. Um, to make a cowl, I don't have the, ooh, I don't have the directions close by, but it's the Westcott, W-E-S-T-C-O-T-T. -T -T. Let me just type that in. Westcott cowl. 
Um, and they use a different yarn, but Meg, the owner of Webinart, chose to use um, the Kids Sell Kays held with the alpaca um, soft. And this is the one I made for myself. Oh, you can see the blue. This is the one I made for myself. So you can see there's kind of a rib and boxy kind of thing going on. And um, I lied, this is not the, um, this is the alpaca saw from Rowan, but it's the um, Yoshi and Lucy, is it called Mercedes? The, um, nope, that's the wrong bag entirely. There's gonna be, a, oh, it's right here in my lap. There's gonna be a lot of fussing around. Um, while I look for things, Yoshi, Yoshi, here it is. Um, yeah, Yoshi and Lucy, Rosa, not Mercedes. So there's Yoshi and Lucy, cute little kitty cats, and Rosa. This one I used in place of um, the Kid Silk Haze because it had the blue that I wanted. It also had twice as much yardage, so, um, and then it's reversible, so I could get a little bit bigger cowl out of it. So it's reversible, it looks just a little, does it look a little bit different? Maybe. And here's the, um, this one is made with um, a different color of each, and this is using the um, Kids Silk Haze. And you can see the stitch pattern much more clearly. Let's see. Isn't it pretty? So this is an icy blue one. My sister's going to get this for Christmas. Hopefully she's not listening. Um, yeah, it looks a little different on one side than the other. So those um, garter stitch ridges are in line with the columns of rib on that side. And on the other side, they are not. They are wider than a strand of rib. Or column of rib. See the difference? So that's otherwise they're reversible. I have not woven in the ends. They've been done for a long time and true confession I didn't knit this one that's going to my sister. Don't tell her. Um, I had moved on to other things and my friend Marilyn knit that one for me to give to my sister so that was really nice. Um, but the Kid Silk Haze is a 25 gram ball. I keep losing the back. Here it is. Is a 25 gram ball and there was only this much left and not quite enough to do another uh, a complete set of repeats um, that the pattern called for. So um, everybody who used the Kids Sell Case did like eight rows less or something for the cowl. But the Yoshi and Lucy is I think 50 grams. We can verify that because I still have the tag right here. Yep, so it's twice as much yardage so you could get the full um, cowl out of it. So um, that was not why I used the blue for mine, the bright, bright blue, but um, I used it because it was the bright blue. But so mine's a little bit longer. <sighs> so that was the first month of the knit along. That was um, July. And then uh, after that was <laughs> August. And um, I think August was the, yeah, August was the month where Somebody mentioned a temperature blanket somewhere just randomly on Facebook, or maybe it was during the chit chat at the knit along. I say knit along, it's a whatever along. And so um, we declared, we, that's me, the royal we, declared um, that we would do temperature blankets or temperature whatever. And a temperature blanket is, um, let's say, a blanket that um, marks the, hmm, marks isn't the right word, like records. How about that? It records the temperature for a year or some period of time that you choose starting whenever you choose. So um, for example, you could start January 1st and find the high temperature every day. And then um, you're also choosing a palette of colors. So you could do rainbow or you could do red violets to blues or whatever floats your boat um, and uh, assign them to numbers to a range of numbers like the 10 0 to 10 degrees 10 to 20 no that wouldn't work 11 to 20 whatever um how about 0 to 9 10 to 19 20 to 29 that kind of um range and then um you can knit however you want or crochet or weave or whatever each day a color to represent the high or the low in my case i chose to do both because i'm an overachiever so 
Um, and then by the end of your year, you have a big piece of fabric. Um, so mine's going to be, um, I started mid-year. Uh, one of our knit alongers, Anna, she's making one for her father for Christmas, which I don't know if he knows about it, but I'm pretty sure he's not watching this, so um, we're safe to talk about it. But his he was born in um, Tennessee in, I don't know what year, a while ago. So she's, she chose that year, and she chose the temperatures that happened that year in Tennessee. So um, I thought that was really cool. I hadn't thought about doing like doing it to commemorate a, a different year. But anyway, I started mine mid-year, um, and it's been, so I started mine in the beginning of August, and it's middle of, it's almost the end of November now, so August, September, October, I'm in the fourth month, ooh, yeah, and I'm, I decided to do three panels because it's going to be really long, um, so I'm going to do three panels and sew them together. Another of our knit alongers decided she just wanted to do smaller pieces, and she's crocheting, and she's crocheting with a linen stitch and she's going to hang her panels um, somewhere. I picture them over her couch. I don't even know what her couch looks like, but that's what I picture. So um, that may or may not happen. I don't know. Uh, but she's like she's making narrower pat panels and, and they're, it's a really pretty fabric that she's getting. Um, and Anna was doing knit, knitting, but she was also doing a linen stitch. So that was kind of a cool coincidence. Um, and so mine, I did rainbow. So red for the hottest color. So anything, oh, and I just went with, um, I think I have 10 colors. So red for the, um, hottest colors and down to the purples for the, for the cool colors. And since I started in August, we've got, that's the beginning that cast on and I did highs and lows. So for example, the high the first day must have was in whatever range my orange is, and then the low that day was in whatever range the yellow is. Next day, high was the lighter orange, low was the chartreuse. And so the reds here, those were hotter days. Red's the hottest color I have. I just, I, you know, at some point you just run out of colors. Um, so you can see it getting a little cooler, and then it gets hot again. And then that silver, that gray that's in there, that's the end of August. So I, I marked the month and then, oh my gosh, it got cold or something. I don't know what green is. <laughs> You'd think I'd remember them by now. And then there were some cold days. There's blue and there's not as much yellow. And then we have a bunch of yellow and the orange goes away. So anyway, it got cooler. Oh my gosh, that part's really pretty. I'm not a fan of the yellows and oranges for some reason. And that's where I am now. It got warmer again. And um, I'm only on November, oh, something. I'm in mid-November, I'm not caught up. Um, I got mad, oh, that looks really pretty right there. Oh, so that's the beginning of, oh, so look, that's the beginning of November. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I just finished November 9th. Um, I'm using Weather Underground's website for my um, data. You can go in there and um, pick a place and pick a um, go, I don't know, somewhere scroll down that has history and you can find the highs and lows for whatever time period you want. And I was having a little issue because, um, I don't know, about a month into it, I figured out that um, the place that I had in there was Lansing by the airport, which is not where I live. I live on the other side of town. And so when I looked at the temperatures for the other side of town, it's like, those are totally different temperatures. So being me, I tore out my temperature blanket and started it over. So now it's Hazlitt temperatures instead of Lansing, because I live in Hazlitt. But that's my temperature blanket so far. Boop. And I'm using um, Tempo from Jojo Land, um, which is a, it's kind of like Plymouth Encore, except it's a little um, glossier. It's, let's see, it's from Jojo Land. It's 80% acrylic and 20% wool. Um, machine washable, which is a nice feature for a blanket, especially when you have a dog. My dog is by my feet right now. Um, so that was the second month. That was August. Hey, look, there's somebody. Hi, Linda. <laughs> oh, thank goodness somebody's watching. <laughs> oh, I just made it up. It's, um, thank you for asking, though. It's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I was like, is it even working? Um, 
it's garter stitch. So, and I just cast on kind of a random number. It's, it's, it's not a random number. It's 79 stitches, which has meaning to me, which I'm not ready to share yet. Um, so it's, I, I calculated it, um, three widths. Let's see, this is about 18 inches maybe. So three widths are going to be about four and a half. No, that's not right. Four and a half feet wide. I was trying to dis divide um, how wide I wanted it to be into three. Um, and whatever numbers I came up with, um, this is what the answer was. So um, thanks. Hi, Meg. Hi, Janet. Or Jane. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. I know, right? So Meg says, Meg's the owner of Woven Art. She says, hi, sir. I love to see your whole face. Because when I do, Silka! Oh my gosh. Yay! <laughs> Um, when I do the knit along at Woven Art, I'm wearing a mask because I'm in a retail place where people are coming in. So um, I have to wear my mask. So yeah, so I haven't seen Meg um, in like all, even though I work with her three days a week, I haven't seen her face um, for a while. Like maybe, I don't know, March? Let's say March. Uh, yeah, so yay, I'm so happy people are here. I've just been talking. Um, so yeah, this is um, going to be three panels wide and I'm going to put just, I don't know how I'm going to put it together yet. And there's the issue of this. Um, Anna, who's making the linen stitch one has a lot of fringe as well. We, we're, we're working on um, plans for what we're going to do with that. Um, and uh, so I'm going to put it together with the silver, just simple borders. And it'll be three times this wide, which should be wide enough. And then <laughs> this long, which is pretty darn long. I'm almost to the end of the of the what four month cycle I guess I need to do some math and figure out when to stop um, so yeah you multiply what two stripes times 365 days plus I have two stripes times 12 months and then I have no 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 that's a year oh boy I'm doing math on the fly it's not good and then uh, with two stripes in between each month and then divide that by three and it wasn't an even number or a whole number so we're going to have to fudge on the sewing a little bit at some point. So that was the second month. That was August. September, um, one of my uh, COVID things was to try to learn a little bit more about crochet because I work in a shop that sells stuff for knitters and crocheters and weavers and spinners and whatever. Um, I'm not all there yet. And um, a lot of my classes could be geared toward uh, crocheters just as easily as toward knitters. So I um, have been upping my crochet game. And so I declared September to be crochet month. But again, you don't have to crochet. You could knit. You could just eat your lunch. You could do whatever you wanted. And I decided to use some pretty yarn that we had in the shop. There's a theme. It's, it's sponsored or whatever. There's no sponsor, but it happens at Woven Art. So I'm using Woven Art yarn. And um, we had gotten in this Rowan Fine Lace. It has two different labels for some reason. Uh, whoop, whoop. Where's the focus? There we go. Whoop, over here. So Rowan Fine Lace. This is the same yarn, um, different labels. And it's a lace weight, so it's thin. Ooh, where's the end? Thin. Oh, not when you hold it way up there. There you go. It's thin. Like, um, Don't floss your teeth with it, please. Pretty please. Oh, there's more people. <gasps> Hi, Linda. Yeah. Um, oh, so was that, um, Linda, was that Stitches West then? Or what did I do that at, um, I taught at Red Alder in Tacoma. Linda says she's in my, it was in one of my classes on March 12th. <sighs> one of my last in-person classes. Yeah, I taught at Red Alder in um, Tacoma, Washington and um, Stitches West in Santa Clara, California, um, and then I flew home, and um, then we got the stay-at-home order, so that was fun. <sighs> I'm kidding. Um, so this is my first ever granny square, and I am just going to town. I'm going to knit until, um, see, I'm a knitter. I'm going to crochet until I run out of yarn, I decided. So this is how big it is so far, and I'm, um, oh, I should mention I also am a tech editor. Uh, for knitting books and patterns and magazines. So I have um, 
some crochet clients. I do editing for crochet patterns too. So again, wouldn't it be nice if I actually knew how to crochet, which I do. I'm just not amazing at it. So I'm working on it. But this is uh, just a big square. And this yarn, by the way, is um, Merino and Alpaca. I just made that up. Let's see what it really is. <sighs> Look at that. It's Baby Surrey Alpaca and Fine Merino. And it's soft and squishy. And this is going to be my winter um, scarf that I wear this year under my black coat. But I want it to be bigger. I want it to be just all smushed up around my neck. But look, it's actually getting there. Um, so I'm not done yet. But I'm excited because the balls are starting to look like this, that little squiggly part where it looks like you're actually getting toward the end, which I'm not. But um, uh, the good news is that the rows get bigger each time. So they use up more yarn. And then there'll be the issue of weaving in ends again, ugh. And my friend Edie taught me a tip um, because of blah, 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 crochet, blah, 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 technical crochet terms. Um, the uh, corners of granny squares can skew because you're kind of always going like this. So her suggestion, which I followed because I'm a good listener, was every so often, and I choose, I, I have four colors going and I chose to do it on the dark blue rose. Instead of doing, let's see if we can see this. Uh, so normally here's that green one and the light blue one and the gray. I've got three double crochets and a chain and three double crochets. On the blue, look at that, I have two and then a chain and then four. So still six to make the corner, but I'm scooching it i don't know which way plus i i'm seeing mirror image so i don't even know what to do but um it scooches it the right direction to keep it more square so it's not going to skew isn't that pretty and it's so drapey i'm so excited um when it's done i want to wear it but i also want to put it in the shop and make people buy that yarn because i think everybody should be knitting oh and it's kind of a bigger hook by the way i think i said knitting again did you hear that Everybody should be crocheting with this beautiful yarn. So I'm using a hmm, four millimeter H G. Um, I don't know, but it's big. It's too big for lace weight, but it also makes it um, have a really nice drape to it. I'm trying, I'm going for bigger stitches. So that was um, I don't know July, August, September, which takes us to October. And somebody, oh, Valerie, had suggested, she said um, earlier, a year or two ago, two or three years ago, um, uh, the shop had uh, done a knit along with um, stuffed otters, little river otters. Well, they weren't that little. And they were adorable. And tons of people, no, I don't know, tons of people, a lot of people made them. And they were really cute. We even had a group photo toward the end. And so Valerie said, what if we made like a stuffed animal? And I had, for some reason, on Ravelry, stumbled across a pattern. So I suggested it. I said the word and she was like, oh, I want to make one. So what they made, what we made, were sloths. Not just sloths, but sloths wearing ponchos. Because who doesn't want a sloth that's wearing a poncho? So um, we started, well, and then not everybody made sloths. And that's when um, one of our customers, Barb, popped in. She had already made a pandemic puppy, she called it. So, so when I heard about that, I said, can you pop into our knitting and um, show us your pandemic puppy? And she did. And now she comes and knits with us sometimes. Um, oh, I was looking for my sloth to show you, but the reason I can't find it is because it doesn't exist. But I'll show you his poncho <laughs> because, you know, at some point, there's no more knitting and then it's not fun, in my opinion. But here's his little poncho. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And um, this was done with, oh, why not, why not fibers um, from Traverse City, uh, Spunky Minis. I, there, I got two of them, a dark brown that has kind of some variation. I think you can maybe see that. And, um, whoops, where did I go? There I am. <laughs> I scrolled something. And then a pinky one. Pinky being a technical color term, obviously. And um, so that's his poncho. And it's going to get a little button right here to hold it together. 
but um, my sloth looks like like um, that's his I don't know body and um, I don't know oh this is his um, these are his oh look there's a needle awesome these are his little front uh, legs with the little claws made out of eye cord this is the reason I fell in love with them oh boy white is really bright um, but I have to I haven't done much of the sewing or the stuffing and there is <laughs> somewhere his head is oh here it is there's a tiny 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 little bit of intarsia knitting to make his face there's his head it's a little creepy right now a little bit like an alien and um, we have some eyes safety eyes Valerie found some blue ones so I have blue he'll have blue eyes and then I have to embroider his um whoops his um uh, let's see he has eyes oh and we have noses uh Susan found noses oh at woven art duh we also have eyes and um like we would buy one pa somebody would buy one package and then distribute to everybody because you don't need that many eyes um so what do I have to embroider what's left oh a little mouth I probably have to embroider a little mouth I don't like to embroider um so that's why he's in pieces in the bag but then um the next month which is November I declared I for somebody was mentioning I don't know a, a hat with a snowflake or something and somebody else was mentioning something else and I I settled on snow so our theme for this month is snow um and I'll I'll tell you a secret part of the reason that it's snow is because I had a pattern I'd been wanting to make for years that is a snowman and this gave me an excuse to make my pattern so what's happening is that if I want to make something that becomes the theme <laughs> for the knit along don't tell so um so this is a hat pattern I did not get it at woven art and I can't find it on Ravelry but I did find it on the designer's website. Her name uh, is Lisa Carnahan and um, this is a little snowman hat but I'm not making him as a hat. I saw him in, um, I'll type that in the thing right here, Lisa Carnahan, whoops, Carnahan, Carnahan. Um, the shop in Claire right across the street from Cops and Donuts, Claire, Michigan. If you like Cops and Donuts, you may not be aware that there's a yarn shop directly across the street, unless you turn your back on Cops and Donuts and actually look across the street. But there's a very nice yarn shop. It's been there for years. It's called Apple Tree Lane, run by Diane. She's a sweetheart. And um, she had one of the snowman hats, but it wasn't on a head. It was just on the table. And so the head is stuffed. Here we go again. The head is stuffed, but the hat is not. And so when he's sitting on a table, he looks like a little, gosh, the white doesn't work, does it? He just looks like a little puddle of, like, here's the hat. Oh, there we go. He's just a little puddle. So he's my melted snowman, and I've been wanting to make him forever, and now I have. Um, he's not quite done, but I did actually sew and stuff the head, and I made the little hat out of Sonora that I had and a matching scarf. I haven't woven in the ends. And instead of a pom-pom, I did, I love to do things with I-cord at the ends of my hats. So I still have to weave in all these ends, but, um, yeah. So he's, uh, close to that. Oh, obviously he needs his, his, um, carrot nose, which I made once already and it didn't look very good. So, um, I pitched it cause it was only this, you know, I didn't feel like I had to save that yarn and I was mad at it. So I just pitched it and, um, I have two sets of, I went to my button stash, even though, don't tell Meg, maybe she's not listening, Woven Art has a crap ton of buttons, and I went to my button stash, and I found, um, I think these guys might be a little too big for him, but they're just black matte finish, oops, that's hard to do with mirror image here, whoops, I just squirted them both onto the floor, so we'll look at those later, but these <laughs> like a little um oh you can see it like a little beveled or something and i thought if it's supposed to look like coal 
that might look more like Cole. So that's probably what I'm going to use for him. Plus I just squirted the other ones across the room. I don't feel like getting them. So they're not getting used right now. So that is, um, ah, whoops, Meg says she's listening. Lots of buttons at Woven Art. Lots of um, vintage buttons too. I'm excited about that. Um, which leads me to, I'll take a quick commercial break here. Um, I just posted that I'm teaching a, a class on buttons and zippers. I don't have the sample close to me, but um, it's a little, what? It's over there, but I don't want to get up. Um, it's a little pouch with a zipper on top. And then I have three buttons sewn on it decoratively. And the class is called buttons and zippers because I'm very creative with the naming of the classes. And it'll be um, live from my this office right here where I am um, on December 19th, which is a Saturday from one third, not a Sunday, which is what I put in the newsletter. Whoops. Um, from 1.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon, and um, Woven Art sells the four-inch zippers that you need, and did I mention they have buttons? They have lots of buttons in case you don't have a button stash. Um, but I just posted uh, an event. I'll see you. Hi, Heidi. I'll see you later. Um, yeah, I just posted my first Facebook event, and so it's my buttons and zippers class. So that was, that was very exciting. I felt like such a grown-up for actually posting an event. Um, and if I do this again, I'll post it as an event too. I don't know if that'll help, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so that brings us to um, next month. Um, I need to write up a little blurb for Meg uh, tonight to put in the newsletter tomorrow, right? Because today's Monday about um, the theme. Again, theme. Like this month, people are like, well, I'm making this thing and it has dots that are white. So that's like snow, right? And I'm like, yeah, I don't care. You don't even have to pretend to justify that it has anything to do with snow. But kudos for trying anyway. Um, it's cute. Uh, anyway, next month, December. Oh, my God, it's December. Small things. We're going to make small things. So that could be a hat. It could be a pair of socks. It could be... Um, a snowman hat. It could be a sloth. I mean, you could re you could start reusing your um, recycling your um, unfinished projects from previous knit alongs. I um, so one of our new our one of our knit alongers. Her name is oh I keep saying knit along. Darn it. She's a crocheter, and her name is Jamie. And the very first time she popped in and we met her, she had made these beautiful. She showed these beautiful. Um, before, um, hi Meg again, newsletter goes out before we open on Tuesday. Yep, yep, yep. I'll be up late working on that. And a book review. I'm going to give you a book review this time too. Um, sunflower coasters. She had the cutest sunflower coasters. I don't care about sunflowers, but I do use coasters. And now I'm in love with sunflower coasters. Kind of like I didn't used to care about sloths. Sloths. But now I'm going to have a sloth eventually. Um, but look, I found this really pretty yarn. This is um, Elemental Effects from the sock room, the fingering weight room at Woven Art. And it's the kind of yarn, like jumper weight Shetland kind of, that you'd use for um, Fair Isle sweaters. So it's really thin, it's really wooly, and this and it's um, elemental effects. The, um, yarn, the colors are dyed over the natural sheep colors, so you get a nice depth to the colors. Uh, just like this new yarn we got. <laughs> Hi Meg, I know you're still there. Um, we got this really cool yarn from Farmer's Daughter. Um, just in the last few days. It's called Recollect, and it's also, um, the colors are dyed over the natural Rambouillet sheep colors. It's just gorgeous. I sold a bunch of it yesterday to people, um, and I want to make some something out of it too. But this is dyed in a similar fashion. It's um, American sheep and American dyed um, elemental, E-L-E. -E. I'll type that in too. Elemental mm, effects, I think. Yep, it's got to be that. So I'm going to double it. I'm going to um, use two strands of the yellow and two strands of, I didn't get brown. I got like this really cool um, greenish yellow mungy color. It looks more green on the video, but it's um, really pretty. And you know, sometimes those sunflower seeds are kind of greenish. So this is what I'm going to use for my small things. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Oh my gosh, I talked for a long time. Um, I was thinking, I mean, I just sort of did this on the fly today. Um, possibly I will do this again. 
maybe on Mondays. This is Monday, last I knew. Uh, the next one would be, you know, in a week. And I was thinking I would show you um, the next thing I'm teaching, which is not the um, zipper pouch, but I'll be teaching for stitches at home um, in December, the first two weekends of December, and I'll be doing an in-depth study of entrelock, which I, I, lo I love entrelock, and I have all kinds of samples I could show you, so maybe I'll do that next week, same time, five o'clock. That seemed to work okay for me, and it's all about me because nobody over there is telling me what to do. Um, anyway, thank you. I'm glad people showed up. Um, that was fun, and I don't know how to do anything with this again. I mean, it says end live video, so I'll do that next, and then I'll see if I can post this on my um, site, or maybe it happens, I don't know, automatically. We'll figure it out. So anyway, thanks for joining me. It makes me feel better that there were actually people here, and I will see you guys later. Bye.